Good morning, Manna Church. My name is Ben Goodman. It's great to be with you this morning. Um, I want to, over the, the next few uh, mornings, I want to be sharing some things, little tidbits that as we grab them, it'll help strengthen us where we are and also prepare us for the future. Many times people think obedience is just this bad word, it's a legalism, but actually it's God's love language. Um, in scripture, it says, uh, John 14, 21, whoever has my commands and obeys them, that's the one who loves me. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, now this is love for God, to obey his commands. And then John adds this really cool thing, and his commands are not burdensome. This is an amazing thing. One of the greatest deceptions is the idea that, well, if we do things God's way, it's gonna be boring, it's gonna be miserable, it just won't be fun, but it's the religious Christian thing to do. God is saying, no, 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 my way is really pretty simple. It may not be easy, but in the end, his ways are never burdensome. Think about it. God wants you to forgive, and it's easier, we think, to not forgive. But over time, you know what unforgiveness does to our soul and our relationships? There are so many things that if we obey God in the little things, we will see the wisdom of his commands. This idea that we're going to, to, we're going to obey God, it doesn't mean that if we obey God, he'll love us more. Or if we disobey God, love us, uh, he'll love us less. His love is never on the table. If we, if we don't obey God, He won't love us any less than He loves us right now. If we obey God all the time, which would be amazing, that doesn't mean He will love us more. His love is not on the table. Obedience is. How do we show our love for God? Here's one last scripture that'll be really worth uh, grabbing a hold of. In John chapter 21, Peter has failed. He has he has denied the Lord three times. Jesus starts restoring him. And as he's restoring him, he asks three questions. He goes, now, Peter, do you love me? And Peter goes, well, of course I do. Imagine being Peter. Peter's going, Lord, I just screwed up. And <laughs> this is an awkward question, but of course I love you. And then Jesus goes, feed my sheep. Peter's mind just probably popped. He goes. Don't you realize I'm a failure? Don't you realize my weaknesses? You're, you're giving me a job, you're giving me a calling, you're giving me a future when I am so imperfect. A couple minutes later, Jesus goes, um, do you love me, Peter? He goes, yes, Lord, of course. Well, feed my lambs. Now Peter's going crazy. Ha, now you're gonna give me a youth ministry. Are you crazy, Jesus? I have failed. Third time around, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Of course, you know all things. Well, then feed my sheep. What was Jesus doing? Jesus knew all about the failures, but Jesus also knew about his promises. And God was saying, do you love me more than your failures? Do you love me more than your weaknesses? Do you love me more than your excuses? Do you love me more than what you think you can't do? And Peter, he turned out pretty well. Obedience is based on our hope that God really knows what he's doing. So I wanna pray for us that obedience would be something that would, it would be a joyful thing in our heart, that we would know that this is the way that we can love God. Lord Jesus, would you, would you, would you fill us with your spirit and help us see what pleases you, and then help us to take the next steps uh, to obey you. Lord, help us let you lead us. Amen. Have a great day. <laughs>